Jeff Rader has three types of wood hogs for size reduction. The traditional wood hog, the razorback wood hog, and the horizontal wood hog. The traditional wood hog handles small to very large pieces. The razorback is very effective in handling stringy bark applications as well as traditional materials. And the horizontal hogs are required for very long in feed applications. Each of these types of wood hogs make Jeffrey Rader very versatile in the industry. The industries that we're in, of course, are in industrial briquetting, pellet manufacturing, wood yards, paper mills, mulch producers, compost and potting soil producers, saw mills, furniture factories, veneer and plywood plants. We have a variety of sizes of wood hogs to accommodate various infeed sizes, materials, and throughput requirements. Our smaller wood hogs can accept materials up to four inches in diameter and 18 inches long. Our lar largest wood hogs can accept infeed material size of 14 inches in diameter and 66 inches in length. Our wood hogs are engineered for increased productivity and they provide long life facilitate easy maintenance. We have alloy steel liners. They're drilled and tapped for easy replacement. Mm. Adjustable breaker plates are movable to compensate for plate wear and assist with specific product sizing. Our rotor shafts are drilled. This allows for hydraulic removal of bearings to keep downtime to a minimum. The double sealed roller bearings this ensures long life and keeps contaminants from entering the bearing house or the bearings. The bearing fill block allows service and removal of bearing housing without removing the motor. We have a rugged disc type rotor. All wood bark hogs include lugs on the disc to assist with the processing of the oversized materials. The new hammer metallurgy and designs that we never stop working toward. Uh, we have several choices are available now including the Jeffrey exclusive Dura tip with replaceable tips for easy maintenance. A easily, easily accessible metal traps standard in every wood hog. This traps, these traps help to minimize damage when metal enters the hog. And slant flow screen grates that provide maximum open area and assist flow of materials through the hog for optimum capacity. We have large clean out doors that allow easy access to the bottom of the hog for scheduled inspections. This particular wood hog is in a biomass facility. It's a 58 WBE with 600 horsepower connected. The application required 600 horsepower to process the material necessary to get through the throughput rates and the product size desired. In most cases, if not all cases, the screening of the material prior to the wood hog is suggested, which this one does have. And this will ensure that no oversized pieces will enter the hog, wood hog, which will affect throughput rates and horsepower usage. Screening of the material will also reduce wear rates of the internal workings of the hog, and, and the generation of fines will be kept at a minimum. The metal trap compartment is integral in every one of our wood hogs. This trap effectively collects the, the mm -hmm. pieces of metal that can, can, can damage your wood hog. The tramp metal pocket is located at the back of the machine. As this compartment fills up with material, it, adds, it acts as a cushion for the material that uh, could enter the wood hog as gently, gently as it can be placed in the back of the machine. This compartment needs to be evacuated at least once a month or more often if you have an inordinate, inordinate amount of tramp metal in your process. The pivot housing, if you'll note in this drawing, the end feed chute must be independently supported from the crusher housing to produce no load on the top of the flange. As you see in the drawing, when the pivot housing is placed in the open position, the maximum load is a total of 250 pounds. Maintenance personnel can use this type of, uh, this area, the workbench, during hammer replacement as long as this weight restriction is adhered to. When the housing is at its maximum open position, it must have cribbing or supports placed between the floor structure and the underside of the open housing. This kind of levered housing is a load of about 7,000 pounds at 36 inches from the housing pivot. 
This is the opening of the wood hog in preparation of a hammer change using our hydraulic unit that's operated from the back of the machine. It's a one horsepower unit, and it being at the back of the machine, it also is a safety feature that uh, the operator is not exposed to any of the pinch points on the front of the machine. This is also a picture of uh, a hammer being replaced. As you can see, the page two operators, one to pull the pin, one to place the hammer in the alignment position to, to place the hammer in the correct position to be locked. The rotor is then unlocked in advance to the next row of hammers. It is then relocked to pro proceed with the hammer replacements. This is our Duratip hammer. We have an SS hammer and a standard hammer. We have a high alloy content, and this particular style hammer provides a shredding action. As you can see, the edge on the tip itself, this is what creates the shearing action. We do have other hammers that include hooked and reversible hook designs, which are available in both hard coat and alloy materials. When we ship the Duratip hammers, we also ship them with all new hardware. This is also a safety item that needs to be adhered to. We also have hammer balance arrangements that can be provided. We use a scale capable of digitally measuring the hammers to one one hundredth of a pound. If using renewable tip hammers, hammer shanks should also be weighed first and placed into the balanced hammer arrangement. Then the tip assemblies, tip and hardware can be mounted to the shanks without additional weighing the balance of the hammer will be maintained. As I said, we do, we can provide the hammer balance arrangement upon request. This is the service that we do provide with our part cell. Our liners are abrasion resistant liners. They're all manufactured for thick abrasion resistant AR400 steel plate to protect the hog from high impact and normal wear. And the liners are drilled and tapped and bolted from the outside. This eliminates the bolt heads on the inside of the machine where they can wear and break off. Our screen, our slant flow screen grates are unique to our wood hogs. Unlike conventional screen sections, the slant flow is designed to angle into the flow of the material being shredded. This gives a more shredding action and allows the material to evacuate faster from the machine. When the material is evacuated faster, the result is less wear on the screen, grates, and hammers, and a more uniform product size. The screen grates are manufactured from heavy abrasion resistant steel plate. Our heavy duty rotor design is an alloy steel mounted design, self aligning spherical roller bearings. It's dynamically balanced. And we also have a heavy duty SS rotor. Rotor balance is extremely important to maintain a smooth running machine with minimal vibration. The excessive vibration levels reduce the life of the bearings and place undue loads on the machine and its surroundings. Jeffrey Rader dynamically balances the bare rotor and then fully assembled the rotor with hammers and hammer pins prior to shipment on every wood hog. By following this procedure, the dynamic balancing of the rotor without hammers and hammer pins remains accurate and further dynamic balancing efforts are required to keep the rotor in balance every time a new set of hammers or hammer tips is changed. The verification of rotor speed is also advisable during startup operations, and if a direct drive is supplied, rotor speed can be verified by motor nameplate data and or by using a tachometer on the wood hog shaft. If the wood hogs are driven with a belt drive system, the rotor speed can be verified by measuring the diameter of the belt sheath along with the motor nameplate data and or by using a tachometer on the wood hog shaft. During the startup and shutdown of a crusher, vibration occurs due, due to the rotor speed going through the installation's natural frequency. The foundation and crusher installation steel structure design determines how noticeable the vibrations will be seen and felt. And Jeffrey Rader recommends a minimum of two and a half times the weight of the crusher be designed into the foundation mass 
to provide a stable foundation for the crusher, crusher installation. There's various material types, species, and wood bark being processed, and it all performs differently, resulting in additional horsepower requirements, various throughput rates, and different end product sizes. In feed product size varies, and this will dictate the amount, the model of the wood hog required. Of course, the larger the in feed size, the larger machine required, and the more horsepower to process the material. Our WBH horizontal hog is most suited for the long in feed size, pictured in the upper left hand corner. Our standard WBE wood hogs will process the material in the pictures in the upper middle and upper right hand corner of the slide. And our WBE SS hogs are more suited to process the material at the bottom line of the pictures. In feed product size considerations are very important. The in feed material content mix can also affect the ability of the wood hog to process material efficiently. Maximum piece size should not exceed 10% of the total in feed rate. The material that already meets the desired end product size but is processed through the wood hog anyway will be reduced in size further, increasing the wear to the components of the hog and needlessly consume some of the hog's capacity. If the materials are already meet the end product size requirements, it can be removed from the flow feeding into the hog. The hog will use less power and reduce maintenance requirements. Some of the factors affecting capacity and performance. These are the factors that will affect the capacity and the performance of our wood hogs, which directly affects everything that I have listed, the machine size selection, drive motor selection, various material types, in feed product size, amp feedback system, design of the in feed hood and in feed system, design of the discharge chute, in feed material distribution, the wear of internal components, air takeaway systems, rotor speed, rotor balance, recommended lubrication and relube interval, and the startup checklist. Machine size and guidelines are based on regular and continuous speed evenly distributed across the rotor face. Maximum size should not exceed 10% of the end feed and should be randomly spaced. Surges resulting from large pieces must not exceed five seconds of duration. The size reduction ratio will have an effect on the rated capacity of the hog and required horsepower, and the end feed pea size should be considered for proper sizing of the wood hog. End feed pea size lengths of eight feet or more, typically broken limbs and damaged logs from the drum debarker, makes a horizontally fed hog more practical in operation. When sizing a wood hog, it is paramount that all the information concerning the end feed material is discussed prior to sizing the machine. We provide this data work, this data sheet uh, for our potential customers to fill out. This will ensure that we do size the, the correct hog for your application. The end feed material distribution. The end feed belt needs to be wide enough to ensure the end feed material is being fed evenly across the full width of the rotor. The uneven end feed material distribution reduces the ability of the hog to produce material at the rated capacity and also causes uneven wear to the internal components. Large surges will be placed, will place undue loads on the system and produce less uniform and end product sizing. In the event that the installation is already complete and the end feed belt is too narrow for the crusher opening, chevrons and material flow deflectors, baffles, can be incorporated into the end feed chute work to disperse the material flow more evenly across the width of the rotor. This may require some trial and error position to opt optimize the effectiveness of the chevrons. This is very difficult to achieve to get an even flow uh, with this type of application. The example of uneven distribution of end feed material and drop height is in this picture. Sorry, let me back up. The 
One, internal components in the wood hog can lead to reduced shredding efficiency, increased horsepower requirements, reduced capacity to the wood hog, and in some cases, the plugging of the screen grates. Uh, the hammer tip clearance to the screen grates and the front breaker bar are the areas to begin your inspection of the wood hog if you suspect wear of the internal components could be the reason of the machine not performing adequately. As you can see in this picture, there's uneven wear of the hammers uh, and this is and of the grates, and this is a direct indirect relation to the end feed of the hog. As you can see by the photograph on the left, the end feed material is being directed into the machine at the proper angle. The rotor in this particular hog is rotating in a clockwise manner, and the material will be entering the hammer circle at approximately the 2 to 3 o'clock position. This will ensure the material will be entering the hammer circle at the downward angle of the hammers. Take a look at the wood hog in the left picture frame. As you can see, the material is entering the hog 90 degrees from the proper entry point. If the machine is pointing north with a motor point south, the material will be entering the machine at the centermost point of the rotor, only utilizing approximately one half of the rotor surface. This improper feed of the machine will adversely affect wear items, hammers, center discs, wear plates, screen grates. It will also contribute to vibration issues that will be a direct result of uneven wear of the hammers and discs on the rotor. In this condition, the throughput rates will be approximately one half to two thirds of its design capabilities. We also we can provide an in feed chute to your particular wood hog application, and we always advise that we have service people on on site when starting up a machine, or as early in the process as possible. Again, this is a picture of where it is designed to discharge the material in the right area. The crusher discharge must be unrestricted and capable of handling the maximum crusher capacity. This installation was, was concerned with airborne particulate and put the discharge chute close to the conveyor belt. They also attached a rubber skirting to the chute, completely suiting it all. This particular did not come out of the discharge, but instead followed the path of least resistance going back up the chute, discharging the particulate from the top end of the feed chute. This condition causes several problems. It causes decreased production due to the recirculating load. It also produces fines in, in product size, dust being swept in, in past the rotor dust seals while the crusher has been operating. If the discharge chute is sealed tightly, the crusher will be airbound and the material will not be processed through it properly. Jeffrey will supply air takeaway systems and manufacture air takeaway pans into the common structural steel bases. The air takeaway pans are equipped with connection flanges for the customer's ductwork and inlet damper to the opposite side of the wood hog. If the air takeaway system collection pan under the wood hog is supplied by others, Jeffrey Rader recommends the air takeaway system be equipped with, with a air inlet damper. The air inlet damper is used to balance the amount of air being pulled through the hog and the amount of additional air entering the duct in the discharge chute. This is another application. It's a different uh, wood hog. It's, as you'll see in this slide, the material is entering the razor back. It's quickly cut between the angle hammers and the attrition plates as it moves along the length of the rotor. We also have a hydraulic assist opening. It has a three horsepower self-contained hydraulic power unit, four cylinders. The unique design features include a three size reduction zones, a primary zone, secondary zone is the attrition, and the discharge grade. We have angled hammers, which provides helical cutting. This also provides a turbine type flow. It, it is capable capable of reverse rotation. This allows even wear on all the components. 
The attrition plates also provide 360 degrees of size reduction surfaces. Some of these materials process, as you can see, are some nasty looking material. Uh, the Razorback is very much equipped to take care of the, the long stringy material like you see in this in two of these slides. It can process the wood waste, unhogged bark, soft wood, hardwood, and stringy hardwoods. Stone and aggregate. The materials of construction, the components are the housing, made of A36 mild steel, the line is AR400 alloy, the attrition plates, AR400 alloy, the rotor shaft is A620 alloy, rotor assembly A572 alloy, the hammer pins 4140, the hammers are 400 vanil with carbide tips. And we also have discharge grates that we can put in the machine if you have an inordinate amount of shooters, as we call them, or long sticks. We have four sizes of the Razorback, 40, 50, 60, and 80. The maximum tonnage rates per hour are 55, 80, 110, and 200, respectively. And also the horsepower was 200, 300, 400, and 600. Now, of course, this will be uh, according to the in-feed size material and the output size material that you want to achieve. The in-feed chute, of course, is included with all the units. Raider chutes, Jeffrey Raider chutes, I should say, ensures proper material in-feed. It includes an access door. It tilts away to allow complete rotor access, and it includes replaceable wear surfaces. The rotor assembly is solid welded balanced assembly. It accepts both fixed and swing hammer designs, allows for varying material in feed types. Reversible design, it allows use of left hand or right hand hammers. It allows drive package on either end. The hammers can be swing, fixed, or a combination of all three. I'm sorry, of two. The benefits, the hammer variation allows for maximum flexibility to adjust output material specifications, and swing hammers allow for increased tramp metal protection. The fixed hammers allow for a higher cutting efficiency. These are the hammer types, discharge, swing, and fixed. And of course, again, the data sheet is always important in every application, whether it be a wood hob or a screen or any type of processing machining. We provide a free lab testing. During the testing of your material, you are inviting and also encouraged to witness the testing. We have service technicians who travel worldwide to provide startup service, and application specialists and staff will help you with any questions. We provide high-quality OEM parts specific to your machine. We have sales and chemical support. We have Dan Moore, estimating and applications manager. He's been here for 30 plus years and is very proficient in wood hog applications and also actually in the mining, the coal and material handling also. Uh, Conrad Matula is the manager of our applications group. He also has 30 plus years in uh, the industry. Kyle Hoffman is one of our newest employees. Uh, he has a mechanical engineering degree from the University of Florida, and he will be able to assist also. Thank you for attending, and if you have any questions, we'll take some sure. questions for the time allotted. Okay, at and this time, all lines have been taken off of mute, so um, if there have been no questions, a question is asked what imbalance value do you allow and we we prefer less than a quarter pound
I have a question regarding that hammer imbalance. Okay. Uh, you just said uh, you allow you like to keep it within a quarter of a pound. Uh, in, in relationship to how heavy the hammer, how heavy is the hammer, typically? Well, it's it, it doesn't matter. Um, it's, of course, it has d different weights of hammers due to the size and type. So it really won't matter as to the size and type. It just uh, we just prefer it be a quarter of a pound or less. So when you supply when you supply a uh, balanced set of hammers, you supply them so that the the rows are uh, they're weighed out so that you're within a quarter of a pound for the total row. No. It's, it's, it's on the balance from like the A to C to B to D arrangement. Oh, okay. Hey, Mitch, what's the advantage and disadvantage to the Razorback? Well, the advantage of the Razorback, the 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 way the material comes into the machine is processed down the line, it's, and with the attrition plates inside, uh, it's very, very good for the stringing material. Uh, and as I was mentioning at the end of that, uh, the razor back you have a discharge area that has no grates but if you have a, a lot of sticks uh, long pieces like that we'll put a grate there to help break that up um, so it processes that very well on the I would say on maybe the negative side uh, or it, it does not process material down to a finer size of uh, end product size as a top fed or a traditional hog, simply because the the material is free it's not free flowing but it's flowing very rapidly through the machine and in a traditional top fed hog, of course it's going to stay in that hammer circle and keep processing uh, through that with the grade sections until it uh, processes it out at that at the desired product size. Any more questions? Thank everyone. Well, thank everyone for attending, and please direct any um, questions to our emails or our phones. Uh, we're just as close as a telephone. We encourage you to t speak with us personally instead of emails. That way, we can talk with you uh, very thoroughly through your application questions and needs. Thanks very much, everyone.